Welcome to this virtual program with Ottawa County Parks. I'm Curtis Dykstra, Parks Naturalist from the Nature Center at Hemlock Crossing County Park. Today we'll be learning all about woodpeckers as we explore their world through this presentation. What is in the name woodpecker? It seems very obvious, right? Woodpecker, a bird that pecks on wood. Well, let's take a closer look at the Latin family name for woodpeckers, Picidae, to see what we can find. Picidae refers to the family of birds that nests in trunks or branches of trees. But more interesting is that the name comes from Picus, a figure in Roman mythology who, when he scorned the love of the witch Circe, was turned into a woodpecker. Woodpeckers prefer woodland habitats. Notably, older forests have a higher number and diversity of woodpecker species. Why is that? Because they contain a larger number of a particular component of forests that woodpeckers need. Dead trees. Where there are dead trees in abundance, there you'll find woodpeckers too. Why do woodpeckers need dead trees? There are a few different reasons. First, they peck on trees in a way that's called drumming, which is an extremely rapid beating of their beak against a tree or another object for the purpose of creating a loud sound, not just to tear apart the tree. Hollow dead trees work well because they resonate the drumming sound, making it louder. Listen to the sound of a drumming woodpecker. The purpose of creating a loud sound is communication both to defend territory against would-be intruders, but also to communicate with their mate. This hairy woodpecker can drum at a rate of 25 to 30 times in a single drumming that lasts no more than one to two seconds. Second, they peck on trees in order to excavate into them. They are looking for two things. Number one, food to eat, and number two, a tree to hollow out to nest inside of. This type of pecking on a tree is usually a more erratic tapping, softer sounding, and is much slower than drumming. It also makes the wood chips fly. There are many adaptations that allow woodpeckers to peck out a living. Without these adaptations, doing what woodpeckers do would certainly be a headache. Zygodactyl feet, meaning two toes pointing forward and two toes pointing backward, give woodpeckers the ability to cling to the trunks and branches of trees, even sometimes upside down. Woodpeckers also have a built-in kickstand to help support their weight while clinging to tree trunks. Their central tail feathers are very stiff, strong, and curved forward, so when they are pressed against the tree trunk, they give the bird support. In order to prevent concussions and brain damage, woodpeckers are designed with shock-absorbing skulls, as seen in the picture in the lower left. And their brains are angled differently than human brains. Take a look at the images up top. This causes their brains to strike the skull over a larger surface area when striking a tree, and thus causes less damage. Not only that, but they have muscles that act like a seat belt holding the skull in place as they hammer against the tree. However, without extremely strong neck muscles to hold their heads straight, all those concussion prevention measures would be all for naught, and woodpeckers would most certainly break their necks when drumming. Last, when excavating, there's a lot of wood dust to get into their eyes and nose. They've got an answer for that, too. They have a second pair of clear eyelids 
that close when they excavate, and their nostrils are covered with small bristle feathers to prevent dust from getting in. All these adaptations, when orchestrated together, allow woodpeckers to do what no other animals on earth can do. Woodpeckers are cavity nesters, excavating holes in trees for the purpose of laying eggs and raising young. Most do this in dead trees as it's easier to excavate dead wood. Some small woodpeckers use dead branches on live trees, and there are some woodpeckers that nest inside cavities carved into live trees, but those trees usually have a degree of rot inside. Males and females both typically tend to the nesting duties of excavation, incubation, and care of the young. Hatchlings come out of the egg naked and helpless, but by only three to four weeks of life, they fledge the nest. However, the parents typically care for their brood until fall when they gain their independence. Most often, new cavities are excavated every year. That's important for other cavity nesting species, such as chickadees, nuthatches, and even flying squirrels that can't excavate cavities on their own. Woodpeckers, depending on the species, eat a variety of foods, from insects, spiders, acorns, and berries, to their favorite snack of all, grubs, which is the larval form of beetles, and they live on the inside of dead and dying trees. So how do they access their favorite food if it's inside the tree? First, woodpeckers use their ears and listen for the sounds of grubs boring their way through the dead wood inside the tree. Next, they excavate a hole into the tree to find the grub's internal maze of pathways. Often, this still leaves the woodpecker out of reach of its snack. This is where things get interesting. Most woodpeckers have extremely long tongues that, when not in use, wrap around their skulls under their skin. Controlled by a set of bones and a sheath of muscle, they unfurl and extend this long tongue into the tree, much like pulling on a tape measure to reach the grubs inside. This mechanism is called the hyoid apparatus. Their tongues may be long enough to reach grubs deep inside, but you may be wondering how they hold on to them and pull them out to eat. The tips of their tongues have tiny barbs, like on fish hooks that grip the grubs and aid the woodpecker in getting it to its mouth. Now let's take a look at what woodpeckers can be found here in West Michigan. There are seven species of woodpeckers that can be observed in our area. Four of them are year-round residents. They include the downy, hairy, red-bellied, and pileated woodpeckers. Three of them are, at least to some degree, migratory. The northern flicker, red-headed woodpecker, and yellow-bellied sapsucker. I'll explain more about this in a bit. Now, let's take a look at each species, their range, habitat, identification, and sounds. The downy woodpecker is our most common woodpecker, even living in urban and suburban neighborhoods. This is because they are the smallest woodpecker in North America and are able to utilize dead branches on living trees for nesting. For these reasons, they are the most likely woodpecker to visit our backyard feeders. They are patterned black and white with white backs and black wings speckled with white. Males have a small red patch on the back of their head. Females lack red entirely. Juveniles temporarily have a red crown. Common calls include a single repeated pick note and a rattling whinny that descends at the end. 
One way to remember this is that downy woodpecker rattles go down at the end, as opposed to the hairy woodpecker, our next species. They drum at a rate of about 15 times per drumming bout. You'll want to compare this to the hairy woodpecker's drumming that clocks in at about 25 to 30 beats per drumming bout. Now, take a listen. Hairy woodpeckers are almost exact replicas of downies, but they are two inches larger. This may not seem significant, but you'll see the difference in a moment. Ranging all across North America, the hairy woodpecker has 17 recognized regional subspecies. They prefer more mature forests as they nest in trunks rather than dead branches like the downy woodpecker. Thus, they are less common in neighborhoods. Common calls include a single harsh and repeated peak as opposed to the pick call of a downy. Their rattle call stutters but does not descend at the end like the downy. And as I said earlier, their drumming rate is about twice as fast as the downy, creating a higher pitched drumming sound. Now take a listen. Here's a picture showing both downy and hairy woodpeckers. Now can you tell them apart? The larger hairy woodpecker is on the left and the smaller downy is on the right. Another thing to look for to tell them apart is the size of their beak compared to the size of their head. A downy's beak barely peeks out from behind the bristly feathers on its face, while the hairy's beak protrudes much further out and is much more obvious. One last detail that is easily missed is the difference with their white outer tail feathers. Do you see it? The downy has black speckles on the white, while the hairy does not. This is most often hard to discern. Now let's take a short quiz. I'll show you one or the other downy or hairy woodpecker. You guess which one it is, and then I'll show you the answer. Ready? Here's the first one. Are you ready? Here comes the answer. This is a female hairy woodpecker. Note the large beak and fully white tail feathers, and also the lack of red on the back of the head. Here's number two. Here comes the answer. This is a downy female. Note the smaller beak and speckled tail feathers. And again, there's no red on the back of the head. Here's number three. Are you ready for the answer? Here it comes. This is a male hairy woodpecker. Again, Note the white tail feathers and large beak, and of course the red on the back of the head. And for our final entry in this quiz, can you answer this one? Here comes the answer. This is a male downy woodpecker. Once again, 
Note the small beak and, although not obvious here, speckled tail feathers. And you can just barely see a little bit of red poking out from behind its head in this picture. Good job. The pileated woodpecker is our largest woodpecker, being nearly the size of a crow. It ranges over most of the eastern United States and through Canada to the west coast. This species requires larger tracts of mature deciduous forest and a larger territory than other woodpeckers, making them a bit harder to find. You'll know if they're in the area by finding their large oblong excavations in dead trees, often with large piles of wood chips below. Both males and females have a bright red crest, but the males extends all the way forward to the bill, while the female has a dull forehead. Their faces are black and white, but males have a red malar stripe or mustache. Their bodies are mostly black, but when they take flight, they reveal large white patches in their wings. Pileated woodpeckers are loud, with single repeated cuck notes and a longer cacking rattle that rises and falls. These calls can carry a great distance along with their drumming that is strong and loud but fades slightly at the end. Now, take a listen. The red-bellied woodpecker is more of a southern species, whose range has been edging northward in recent years. It currently finds its northern limit not far to our north, and is a rare bird in the Upper Peninsula. This woodpecker can be found in forests and also in backyards as it commonly visits feeders. Poorly named, the red-bellied woodpecker does have a slightly reddish belly but it's often not seen because its belly is usually up against a tree. Both males and females have striking black and white striped backs and red napes. However, the male's red extends all the way to its beak, while the female has a gray forehead. The red-bellied woodpecker is often mistaken for the better named red-headed woodpecker, which we'll look at next. This woodpecker is most frequently heard giving its quirr call note. Its rattle tends to start slow and speeds up as it calls. Its drumming sounds much like a downy woodpecker's. Note that some differences in sound quality of woodpecker drumming in general is often the result of what the woodpecker is drumming on rather than indicating which species it is. You can demonstrate this at home by lightly drumming two pencils on different objects. Now, let's take a listen. Red-headed woodpeckers are aptly named for their fully red head, making them unmistakable when you see one. Male and females look alike with their red heads, black backs, and white belly and wing patches. The white wing patch becomes most apparent when they take flight. Juveniles lack the red heads of adults. 
These woodpeckers range across the eastern U.S., but are more localized and can remain in family groups and may even form colonies. In our area, they are most commonly encountered in the mature forests along the Lake Michigan shoreline. This migratory species is more readily encountered in the nesting season, but a few red-headed woodpeckers may be found in winter with some effort to look. Red-headed woodpeckers can make a lot of noise. They have a sharp, queer call note and a chattery, rattling call. Its drumming is fast, but can be hard to discern from other species, but it is often accompanied by call notes. Now, let's take a listen. The northern flicker ranges across North America, but it comes in two color varieties. In the east, we have the yellow shafted form, referring to the bright yellow feather shafts on the wing and tail mainly seen in flight. In the west, the red shafted is more prevalent. More common in the nesting season, the northern flicker can be found in winter with some luck. Flickers are the only brown woodpecker in Michigan. Look for its spotted breast and gray head with red patch on the nape of the neck. Males have a black mailer or mustache. These birds have a habit of foraging on the ground looking for anthills to invade with their long, sticky tongues, much like an anteater. When they take flight, you'll see them reveal their large white rump patch. Flickers have a loud, crisp, clear call and a fun-sounding series of key-key notes. Again, listen for call notes during their drumming to help identify it. Now, let's take a listen. The yellow-bellied sapsucker is our most purely migratory and non-nesting species. It winters in the southeastern U.S. and nests to our north, so we only see it in spring and fall migration here in West Michigan. They have a yellowish wash on their bellies, for which they are named. They are called sapsuckers because they have the unique behavior of pecking sap wells on live trees and licking up the sweet sap. These sap wells become an important food source for early arriving migratory birds such as yellow-rumped warblers. Even ruby-throated hummingbirds depend on them as there can be very few flowers in bloom to nectar on when they first arrive. Sap suckers have dirty looking backs and black wings with a single thick white streak. Males and females both have a red crown patch, but males also have a red throat. Juveniles lack the red on the head. Sapsuckers have a very nasally mewing call and a screaming squeal. Their drumming is distinctive as it varies in rate through each long drumming, but tends to trail off at the end. 
its drumming is the same cadence of someone doing Morse code. Now, let's take a listen. So now you might be wondering how you could observe woodpeckers. Here are some suggestions. First, identify some woodpecker habitat near you and go wandering. Remember to take time to look for dead trees and woodpecker signs. Also, make sure to stop and listen carefully for drumming or for calls. Finally, you can attract them to your own yard by feeding them. They eat sunflower seeds, but are particularly attracted to suet cakes, which can be purchased at most stores that carry birdseed. Thanks for tuning in to All About Woodpeckers. I hope you enjoyed the program and that you are eager to get outside and find one for yourself. Please tune in again with us in the future. For more information, look for additional links in the description below.